It's time for another collaborative podcast that no one asked for. From the creators of Cases of Continuity, No New Friends, and Big Beautiful Discs, get ready for Creators United. And now, give it up for your hosts, Ryan, Dane, and Scott. Welcome everybody to Creators United, the show where we uh, spotlight different creators and some of the biggest and some of the best upcoming creators, <laughs> including myself. Um, my name is Dane, of course. Along with me is um, the man of many names. We'll just go by Ryan tonight. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, my man? Oh, we are tired but alive after truthfully a good weekend. So at least yeah. that's something. How about yeah. you? Yeah, okay. same, same, <laughs> basically. Um, also joining us is a good friend of mine. Um, known this guy for a long time from Twitter. Please welcome Hackerman Joe. From Twitter. I don't know how to feel about that one, but I'll take it because that's where <laughs> most of my garbage lies. <laughs> oh, let me let me rephrase that from X. I'm sorry. From oh, X. oh, okay. The They're okay. formerly known as Twitter. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing, Joe? I, I'm not doing bad at all, actually. I'm still riding that Dune 2 high. I've got AW Revolution off to the side, so I'm like kind of watching in the corner of my eye. There's a match going on. It's a good night. Happy to be here. Happy happy to be invited. Thank you again. This is going to yes, be fun. Yes, sir. No problem. No problem. I do want to talk about your Twitter a little bit. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're we in Discord calls all the time. We talk all the time in Instagram. Um, but I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Where'd you actually learn to like edit photoshop and and videos and stuff like that were you self-taught or were you actually self-taught yes okay uh truth be told it really was just a product of the pandemic i had i had nothing to do and i would get really bored and i would also get a lot of terrible ideas <laughs> and i needed to figure out a way to make those terrible ideas and that's kind of where that started some of those terrible ideas were spawned from you and me as well. So, oh no, we we've created a lot of garbage together that has <laughs> caused severe brain rot across multiple platforms. Yes, 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 yes. We have. So, if if you could like, I don't know, describe your Twitter to someone, what would you say? Like, what would your your selling point if somebody follow you what would oh, that be well i've never had to do a sales pitch for my twitter yet so this is gonna this is gonna be interesting because i'm thinking of one on the fly but well, if you had to usually a lot like the majority of my content now is either terrible shit posts so like <laughs> photoshop what have you or mm. i describe very specific things that happen using professional wrestling reaction memes <laughs> and there's no in between it's just that that's basically what my account has devolved into and right now it's been those two specific things for only dune for like the last month and a half so i've been photoshopping dune and i've been posting wrestling reaction clips to describe dune that's my account now now ryan do you like dune at all funny that you mentioned that dane uh as i Pull out my new Blu-ray. It's going to pull out the pop. Beautiful. Right here. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. I had never watched Dune, actually, until last Thursday. And co-workers telling me, you've got to watch this thing. It's really good. Families telling me, you got to watch this thing. They're like, it leaves Netflix on tonight. you got to watch it. And so I watched half of it, and it was really good. And then I got tired and went to sleep. And I was like, well, I need to finish it. i to get the Blu-ray. So... Probably might after we finish recording here, finish up Dune and then watch Dune 2 in the coming month or so. Yeah. You know, that would be a good case of continuity season. Dune, read the, the book and then the, both the, books, the movies. Yeah. That could be pretty fun. The book is great. And the both movies are the first book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you read the whole thing, you've got both movies already. Now, Ryan, I did want to ask you about cases because it's on like a, you're doing like a every other week kind of thing with the, because you have to read a book now you can't just watch a movie so how's that going for you like is that hmm. taking you a while to read all these books a little bit so i think last time we recorded i had mentioned that for the short story collections i was splitting those up for sherlock holmes and mm. truthfully just my life has been so busy lately that all the podcasting stuff has really had to take a back burner for mm. all of my personal and professional responsibilities that i've had and so 
Sure. Really, I had to switch to a bi-weekly release schedule just for my own sanity more than anything else. Uh, just because there was absolutely no way I could keep releasing an episode a week. And on top of that, you mentioned reading a book. It's somewhat related to that, truthfully, with how much I'm reading now. For those, it actually ends up being slightly less time than it probably would be for a movie's runtime, truthfully. But just with everything I've got going on, I wanted to keep the podcast going somehow, but I knew there was no way I could kind of keep it up with the same way I was doing it. So. Yeah. Well, some theaters are still playing the first one. They're doing double oh, bills every now and then. So, I mean, if you're feeling adventurous, you can do both. The d on the same day, that would be an adventure. Yeah, good five hours of Dune. <laughs> what else could you ask for? Yeah. yeah. But it reminds I me of the uh, theaters that before Avengers Endgame played every single MCU movie in a row <laughs> nonstop. Do we know if the Beatles movies are going to be... Re they're released separately, right? They're not coming out on, like, the same day or anything? The, the you know four, they like, do. The four films? It should be the Beatles, are, and you, know you walk in, and you don't know which one you're getting. So I it's do one that. of the four. I, that would be so... <laughs> that would be funny if they did that. Ryan looks like he doesn't know what I mean. So they're, they're making four... The Beatles? They're making four films based on the four Beatles members, and it's supposed to come out starting next year. Joke. No, it's real. It's real. Oh, wow. It's I don't real, know. And it's it's the guy that it's Sam Mendes. If you know Sam Mendes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I really wish they would put them out on the, the exact same day, so you just have people going into the theater for like six, seven hours at a time and seeing every single movie, because you know people would do that. <laughs> Wild. Instead it, of that Barbenheimer, it would just be Beatlemania Part Two. The 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 BCU, the Beatles Cinematic Universe. All the solo projects are separate movies. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers Endgame is just the Beatles movie. It <laughs> ends. The it ends with the, the Cinematic Universe. Yeah, it ends with the Rocket Man cameo. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. <laughs> At the very end, instead of Thanos, you see Mick Jagger starting the Rolling Stones. <laughs> And the the la the the very last movie is just Live Aid, and then um <laughs> oh the 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 um what would be the equivalent to I guess Far From Home would be Bohemian Rhapsody. Well, obviously, Joe, you're a huge movie fan. Um, almost to a fault, yes, dude. We've obsessed over our friendship is like we go in we we obsess over different like memes at different times. Like now, it's Creed. Oh yeah, Creed hasn't. Have you have you posted any meme Creed, uh, Creed memes on your Twitter? I don't think that's Nothing actually for Creed on Twitter. Yet. No, that's oh, mostly man. been in the DMs. Yeah, yeah, Creed, dude. I I don't know. I think I might like Creed now. I think I might like their music. Creed is not Creed. bad. We can agree on it's, this. It's scare. It's scary. It's it's bad music. It's it's not it's not good music. But their songs, I can't stop listening to them. Okay, it's, I don't think it's bad music. I think it's it's just a very specific subset of music that people are think it's okay to call bad. Because Nickelback has been a punching bag for like the last two decades. But Nickelback but they does are not, not good bad. songs. Nickelback Whoa. does not I don't like Nickelback. Whoa, I don't like Nickelback because okay. they make bad music. That that's You can disagree on that. Creed, I don't I don't know about Creed because I don't like the music, but then when I listen to the songs, it's like I think I might like this. Like the joke is starting to actually become real. Like the joke was that we liked the band, but we actually hated them. But <laughs> now it's starting to become like we actually like them. It's it's strange, very strange. I actually like Creed. What? Yeah. Oh, no. come on, man. I might be seeing them over the summer. Are you actually gonna go see the tour? I think so. <laughs> no, oh, man. I'll I'll leave it up to the 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 Creators United listeners. If this gets a certain amount of likes. I will go to Hershey Park Stadium and and see Creed. All right, Good. I will listen. I will listen to my sacrifice, one last breath, and higher live. If this gets twenty, uh, we'll specify now. If it gets three likes, then Jane oh my will God. go no, see no, Creed. No, 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 no. Hold the no, no, no. We have three. to. Say we have now. to do it. We have to make it a bigger like goal than just three. Okay. Four. No, we have to make it something. We have to make it. Let's make it a respectable one. Okay. Because YouTube videos, if you're not like if we don't have over a thousand subscribers, they don't get many likes. Um, so let's make it a let's make it a challenge a little bit. If you want to see me go see Creed, 15 likes, 15 likes and a deal is on. OK, that's all you need to do. Go to YouTube. If you're listening to this on audio, go to YouTube Creators United. 
15 likes is the goal. Really I will go see green. 15, locking it in. 15. All right. All we have you. to do is get like literally just the people in the discords that were into like oh my video God. and you're going to see Creed. This is not <laughs> going to be difficult. I don't want to. I... Oh my God. Now it's lo I can't change it now because I know that's why in. I made you lock it in. First. Oh, man. OK, well. All right, Discord, do your thing. Discord, Discord will probably force Dane do to have a good time at a concert. I'm going to ask you a question. What's your all-time favorite movie? That question could change as the day goes on. Obviously, but right now, what, what for the is longest that? time it, it has been Back to the Future, and then it was Scott Pilgrim for a while. Evil mm. Dead Two is up there, but right now I think I'd be more inclined to say something like Martin Scorsese's After Hours. Because I love movies where it's just guy has a really awful night and that's the entire thing. Like, have you seen Good Time or like no. Uncut Gems, Bo's Afraid, that genre of film where it's just awful things keep happening mm. until the very end? Mm. I love that sort of thing. Ryan, do you have a question for us? I do have a question. This is actually a question that was suggested by one of our listeners. So I'd like mm. to bring that question us. So, Dane, we'll start with you for this question. Would you ever cheat in online trivia? You, okay. Um, <laughs> would I ever cheat? No. I, I would not cheat in online trivia. That's. I feel like that would be dishonest and unfair to the other people who are participating in the trivia, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're going to be, you know, looking up answers for a online thing like like in the dis his server we do like daily trivia every day right um and like i would just feel bad if i if i looked that up and then claimed that i knew the the impossible trivia that was done that day so no my answer would be no i think that's a fair answer what about you joe would you ever cheat in online trivia let me ask you this what would it take for you to cheat in online trivia <laughs> good question um, if I had to prove something to one specific person out of spite, I think that's mm -hmm. when I would cheat in online trivia. Yeah, but as yeah, it stands yeah. right now, I've never cheated in online trivia to the point where I'm almost kind of sad I didn't because I did lose <laughs> an online version of Bruce Campbell's Last Fan Standing in the pandemic. And that has haunted me for the last four years. So no, I have not cheated. But if I were trying to spite somebody, then yes, I would cheat online. I think that's a fair answer. Um, and truthfully, too, I'm glad that we've got, like, ethical guests coming on the show. We don't want to have anybody <laughs> well, yeah, super we, we, unethical. We, we have so. we have honest guests here. Yeah, like, or have you cheated in the Diz His trivia? I have never cheated in the Diz His trivia. I don't know why I would cheat in the Diz His trivia. <laughs> like, I mean, it would just, I would have to be kind of sad to do something like that, I feel Wait. like, because it means nothing. Like, nobody cares. Why would I cheat? Like, what kind of person would that make me, you know? Uh, I don't know. It would make you a very, I don't know. It would make you a unethical. very unethical and, and untrustworthy person, I think, to to mm -hmm. specifically cheat. Not only just in the Diz His Trivia specifically. Um, it's really the only kind of online trivia I do, so that's why I'm bringing that up. I'm not trying to, like, single anybody out here or anything. Yeah. Next Sunday, right? A week from today is the is the Oscars. So yeah. I want to get some I want to get some picks from us. Okay, so I'm gonna go category by category. I'm gonna skip some. Just I'm gonna go by the important mm -hmm. ones. Um. So let's start with the uh, start with the actor in a leading role. So the nominees are Bradley Cooper, um, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Paul Giamatti for the Holdovers. Um, how do you say this guy's name? Killian Cillian. Killian, Killian Murphy. Murphy. Kill okay, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, and uh, Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. So I want to go around the horn here and get everyone's pick. So we'll start with Joe. Who do you think is winning um, Best Actor in a lead? Now, there are two answers. There's who I want yeah. and who I think is getting it. Yeah. The obvious answer for who I want is Paul Giamatti. I mm -hmm. think he had the best performance of the year. I think out of his entire career, he is the most deserving. Mm. But that's not the question here. The question is, who are the Academy going to vote for? And it's, oh, without a shadow of a doubt, it's Killian Murphy. He's won the Golden Globe. He just won the SAG Award. Basically, anytime he's nominated with Giamatti, he's taken it. Mm. And if you're looking at those trends, the Academy voters, there's a lot of overlap with the other academies. So if you're looking at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, voting patterns stay. Killian's taken it. I 
would put money on it if I were betting. I think Killian's taking it. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, the only one of those movies I haven't seen is Rustin. I'm hoping to see that at some point this week. I don't think Cooper wins at all. No shot in hell. Maestro, I think Maestro maybe will win one award next. I'd be surprised if it won that. I'd love to see Jeffrey Wright win for American Fiction, just because like, I feel like that is his career-defining performance. But mm. I got to go with Joe. I really think that Murphy's going to be the one who wins. I'm going to agree. I Because I... I, me and Joe, uh, we we 100% agree with each other because I want Paul Giamatti to win as well. Um, he, he's the most deserving. Um, his performance in the holdovers was fantastic. Um, he's been he's been nominated for an Oscar before best supporting actor, right? I forget what movie that was for, but I I love Paul Giamatti, but. <laughs> Killian Murphy's gonna take it. Like I don't, I don't. I think this is a lock. I, I think this and and another category are a lock for Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. um, I would say three are locks for Oppenheimer. Maybe four actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I know which ones you're talking about. That's true. That's true. Okay, how about supporting role? Um, this one is very very interesting to me and it's going to be very interesting to see who takes this one i think this is the most interesting of the entire night um but the nominees for this is uh sterling k brown for american fiction robert de niro for killers of the flower moon robert downey jr for oppenheimer uh ryan gosling for barbie and mark ruffalo for poor things so to me it comes down to robert downey jr or robert de niro i i, I think um Killers was a fantastic movie, and it's Robert De Niro, so of course he's going to be favorited. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. was just spectacular in Oppenheimer. Um, so to me, it's these two, and you can really flip a coin <laughs> to determine who was better in, in those two movies, I, in, in my opinion. Um, I think my pick is going to go Robert Downey Jr., I guess. Um, which is the correct pick so good yeah um yeah joe go, uh, you can probably explain this better than i can rdj is taking it without a shadow of a doubt i think like last year's the categories are fairly predictable mm. based on every other award show again if rdj was nominated i don't think he's lost at a major award show yet they're playing into the career angle for the campaign they have universal money for the campaign. They have the big blockbuster money for the campaign to show this is a big movie that everybody's seen. People have had months to ponder Oppenheimer. They're seeing RDJ at all the awards parties. They're campaigning hard for it. I think he's fully taking it based on solely not only the career angle, but the fact that his performance was fantastic in that film. Yeah. The category this year for supporting is unbelievably stacked to the point yeah. where I'm still mad Charles Melton wasn't nominated for may december because i think he should have even won the oscar but yeah the category is insane this year so i understand why he wasn't among the five but he should have been in there he was fantastic in that movie rdj however is the winner in my opinion again it's a fairly straightforward answer i'd be very surprised if it's anyone else I would also say I think Robert Downey Jr. will win the category. My dark horse would probably be Mark Ruffalo, truthfully. I think that he gave a really intriguing performance in Poor Things and his ability to switch between the different emotions of his character I think really made him stand out. That being said, I think the Academy is going to go with the more popular decision and is going to go with RDJ here. Actress in a leading role. Um, Annette Annette Benning, ben Benning, I probably butchered that. Um, okay. Lily Gladstone, Sandra Hewler, Carrie Mulligan, and Emma Stone. Um, I have a very strong opinion here. And I, I didn't say any. As do I. I think it's going to be between Sandra Hewler for Anatomy of a Fall, which is just a brilliant film, and Emma Stone, who gives an incredible performance in Poor Things. I think it'll be tight between the two of them, but I think Sandra Hewler takes it home, especially considering how different her performances were between Anatomy of a Fall and Zone of Interest. Obviously, she's not being nominated for Zone of Interest here, but it shows her range in the past year, and I think she's going to be the one to take it home. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Interesting take. I would have to disagree, though. 
I firmly think it's Lily Gladstone's Oscar this year. Really? Yes. I think she's taking it. I, I, I think out of all the performances I've seen, hers was the best. Just fantastic on all fronts. I She carried that film for so many. It was a fantastic movie altogether, but her performance was unbelievable. Not only that, but again, if we're looking at trends and award wins, they've mostly been Lily Gladstone's. Emma Stone has taken a few of the major ones, but it's mm -hmm. mostly been Lily Gladstone. It's going to be a little tight with her and Emma. But if we're look if we're looking at not only campaign money, but the campaign style, Emma Stone's already won an Oscar. Lily Gladstone is not only the first Indigenous woman to be nominated for a major acting Oscar, it's her first Oscar nomination, period. So they're going to play into that for the campaign, which they have been, and they have Apple money behind it, too. I don't want to get into too much business, but I think just sure. based on only the campaign, but how good her performance was, that's enough to secure it. But I i mean, I could be surprised next week. This is, I think, out of all the categories, this is the most uncertain. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to agree with Joe because Killers of the Flower Moon was a great film, but mm -hmm. Lily's performance in that was just, was unbelievable. Um. And I do think I do think it comes down to her and and Emma Stone. Okay, supporting role. This is an interesting one. Um, Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, uh, Danielle Brooks, The Color Purple, America Ferreira for Barbie, Jodie Foster for Niad, and Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. I think Divine. Again, I think I think I know who's there. Yeah, Divine Joy Randolph, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen Niad. I'm hoping to see that this week. I didn't see The Color Purple. I just, I didn't. That wasn't a movie that really I was super interested in america ferrera was fine in barbie mm -hmm. but not anything special for me it's between emily blunt and divine joy randolph and i think that divine joy randolph gives the more layered performance okay animated feature film i we could i mean we don't even have to run down the I, don't, yeah, I don't think we need to discuss like, this we one. don't need to discuss this it's it's a spider-verse just mm -hmm. point blank uh, um We'll skip over that just like the Academy skips over all um, animation films except for that one category. No, but seriously, I'm really happy that um, Nomona got a uh, nomination. I think Nomona is a great, great film, especially for how they got dicked over by the um, the Blue Sky shutdown. Really, really happy that Nomona got a nomination. Oh, directing Anatomy of Fall, Justin Tr uh, Triet. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, Martin Scorsese, Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan, of course. Uh, Poor Things, I'm going to butcher this Yorgos name. Yorgos Lanthimos. Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, the Zone of Interest or uh, Jonathan, Gla uh, Jonathan Glazer. Stacked category. Yeah. All great projects. All great filmmakers. But you'd be surprised. Nolan is never one for directing. Mm. So, I mean, just based on that merit alone. And just how monumental of an achievement Oppenheimer was, I think he's. I think he's got it in the bag. Yeah, I think there's no way Nolan loses this category. I agree. I did skip over costume design. Um, again, this is it's, to me this is an easy one. Um, really? It yeah, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I think I Barbie wins. I think I was Barbie say Poor Things as well. Oh yeah. no, man! I think Barbie takes this. I Barbie think this is, is a home run everywhere. for poor Barbie. Things, poor things is gorgeous. Like this the is dresses true. that Emma Stone wears. This is true. No, this is true. But look at go back to Barbie and look at the um uh what's her name's character? Uh the um the ugly Barbie. Look at her dress. Yeah, but that that dress is like the coughing baby to poor things hydrogen bombs. Like I don't know if you've seen poor things, but if you're thinking, oh, well, Ugly Barbie's dress is awesome because it is, just mm -hmm. watch Poor Things and every scene has a different version of some big, elaborate, extravagant dress that not only fits what Emma Stone's character is currently going through, but fits the style of the scene as well. It's fantastic how they were able to put that all together. And it's almost scary good. Like, mm -hmm. it, it left me speechless in many cases because the designs are unbelievably gorgeous. I think I'm hey, getting just slightly hurt. ahead of ourselves here, but in that same vein, I wouldn't be. I believe it's nominated for set design as well. I, I think Poor Things has a very real shot at best set design. Oh, it's far more deserving. 
than any of the other ones, I think, because of just Man, how again, but elaborate that's, it is. <laughs> you oh, guys absolutely. are you guys are picking the two categories that I picked Barbie to win. I, I also picked set design for Barbie because wait, you didn't have Pearl. Barbie winning best original song. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. You don't think Billie Eilish is winning? Oh, oh, the, yeah, for that, of course. Yeah, but I thought you meant I'm just Ken. I was like, no, what? no, no, Billie, no, the other one. The Billie, Billie, the Billie Eilish second song. Oscar. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, no, the Billie Eilish song. Billie Eilish song, not I'm just Ken. I thought you meant the that one. I was like, bro. No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> no way. No way you're, you're saying this right now. But yes, the Billie, a Billie Eilish song, 100%. 100%. I don't like it, but I can see why. It, well, I mean, Billie Eilish already has the Oscar from No Time to Die. I don't see any Which reason she why deserved. she wouldn't get another one. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't care for her music, but I can appreciate it. Kind of like Moana. I don't care for it, but I can appreciate it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, See, I really like Billy's music. So. I I do not like Billy's music either, but when, a good song is a good song. Okay, can so... Songs, can we go up to original score right above we can. that? We can. So original score is also an interesting one because I would kill myself if John Williams wins. Uh, the nominees are American Fiction for Laura Car- Cartman, uh, John Williams for Dio Destiny, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robbie Robertson, Oppenheimer, uh, Ludwig Goranson, uh, Poor Things, Jerskin Fendrix. Um, uh, I will say the music didn't stand out to me in American Fiction. I'm surprised that was nominated. I, I quite I'm not kidding before this call i just watched it and i disagree really yeah it was very percussion heavy so it was very subtle but oh, yeah. i i loved it because it really fit the very toned down style the film was going for hmm. it was very bare bones it was just a lot of drums a lot of percussion and it it, it fit hmm. it was beautiful but i don't think it's winning i think it's a toss-up between poor things and oppenheimer but I feel in my gut that it's going to Oppenheimer solely because Oppenheimer is going to sweep everything. Mm-hmm. I think Oppenheimer's yeah. taking it, but Poor Things had a fantastic score, and I think Ryan would probably agree because I know you've said you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, stuff. I was. It was. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed Poor Things. I, I mean, actually, I was. As I say, I was fortunate enough to see that in theaters. Actually, I saw all five of these in theaters. Um, yeah, for me, it's, it's it's really tight between Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Killers, because all three of those had really great soundtracks. Um, Poor Things is definitely the one that stood out the most to me. But again, I got to agree with Joe here. I think that Oppenheimer is going to be the everything, everywhere, all at once of this year, and it's mm-hmm. going to get a whole bunch of awards. So I can see it easily getting this one. I do want to go back up to film editing real quick. Um I, th- I think this is an easy one, to be honest, um, just in my personal opinion. The nominees are um, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I think for film editing, if Oppenheimer doesn't take this, I'm going to have a huge, huge issue with that. <laughs> I think this is a lock for Oppenheimer um, again, because it's going to be a sweep again Oh yeah, for this movie. Yeah, the way that they use color for Oppenheimer's mind, and then they use the point uh, the uh, for Strauss's point of view, they use the black and white scenes. It's I, I've I haven't seen a lot of other movies do that. It's funny I, you I, mentioned that actually with the black and white versus the color. Poor Things also uses black and white versus color, but for an entirely different reason. Mm-hmm. The black oh, and white is used okay. to represent. I'm trying to remember the characters name Bella um, is used to represent Bella's almost imprisonment of sorts, and then when it comes color, that's her freedom and starting mm. to experience life. So it uses the different dichotomy there, but f- for an entirely different purpose yeah. that Oppenheimer uses it for, yeah. which I love. I think I, I don't know. I think Oppenheimer. I think I why I like that, and I haven't seen Poor Things. Um, I I should. Um. But the thing with the Oppenheimer is that this is why I thought the character of Oppenheimer was so portrayed so greatly in that film because they use that to, and of course it sounds like they do this for poor things as well. But Oppenheimer was a real man, right? So they're using that to understand the care, the the perspective of a man that's creating a bomb that is going to kill millions and millions of people. And this was a real guy. Like this, this, this actually happened the bomb that he created the the atomic bomb 
um, that he created killed real people. Um, and like understanding that. And I think the way that they edit those black and white scenes and the color scenes are very, very, very well done. Any of the technical nice. awards, really, I think it's just Oppenheimer's got it. Like I, if you've if you've yeah. seen it in IMAX, if you've seen it in IMAX, that score, you can't deny it's taking sound design. And mm -hmm. again, if you've seen it in IMAX, it's taking. I don't want to get too ahead here, but the editing is very, very, very good, and it becomes much more apparent when you're watching it in IMAX with those expanded aspect ratios. What they choose to expand, what they don't choose to expand, how the cuts play into everything. Because editing is a lot more than people give it credit to be. It comes down to a lot of work. And it was just impeccably done in Oppenheimer. General rule of thumb, if you can't notice the editing, it's good editing. And I think Oppenheimer is a good example of that. You know what? You know what my favorite film to take the, the editing uh, award ever was? If you say Bohemian Rhapsody, I swear to God. <laughs> Set design. They call it production design on the uh, Oscar website. Oh, I thought you were going to give a real answer. I was thinking mine would be no. Lawrence of Arabia. It okay, was, yeah, that's oh, a good answer. That's no, it, no, it's Bohemian Rhapsody. Visual I've only seen two of those. Yes, I've only seen two as well. Um, yeah, visual effects. Um, the creator, Godzilla minus one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Mission Impossible, and Napoleon. I've only seen two of those as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, which two have y'all seen? I don't, because I don't know if you, you may have seen the same ones as me. I saw Mission Impossible and Guardians. Yeah, yeah we saw the, same the other ones. ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't so seen So we're Napoleon, just judging between two here. <laughs> yeah, There's a fair much. shot that these well, two won't win. I think Godzilla's taking it, to be honest, because they, yeah. they had no money and a, like a team of what was it, 10? It was a small team. Let me double check how many people were. On That's the true. Team. Yeah. I, I, as much as I love Guardians, Guardians is a great movie. Um, Marvel not, movies don't win not off. for visual effects though. Not for thirty-five visual effects. people did Godzilla's visual effects. Wow. Thirty-five Holy people. That's yeah. Impressive. Wow. So yeah, that should take it. I think that's, um, that should take it. Yeah, Guardians. And I'm sure those special effects no are better than the um, epic rap battle of history, Godzilla, which <laughs> apparently has spent twenty thousand dollars on their special effects. And if you've seen the video, it looks absolutely awful. Twenty grand on an erp video yep i i don't know about you guys i don't know how about how you feel about the um about guardians 3 it should be nominated that was a great film it should be nominated nominated for categories but they nominated it for the one category that it shouldn't be nominated for its visual effects are not good like <laughs> i don't like it's just it's not good marvel visual effects are terrible the now it is, and and Guardians oh, suffered is. from that, unfortunately. At least Quantum Mania didn't get nominated last year. Oh God! Oh, could you imagine? Or I guess it would have been nominated in this year's cycle. This year. So thank goodness it wasn't nominated. Could you all. imagine? Well, maybe uh, maybe it should win because of the hell that the visual effects artists were put through making good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, writing. Um, speaking so of a, a, first. Speaking of yeah, speaking of a um a screen a, a category that Guardians. You could make an argument should have been nominated for. I, mean, I have no problem with like original screenplay for Guardians. You know, that was a great movie. Um, yeah, let's do adapted first. So nominees, American Fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Zone of Interest. Oppenheimer's um, winning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But come on. <laughs> I agree. Uh, man. So, so I said before, I haven't seen Poor Things. Um, You're going to have to watch it now, dude. No, I do. 100%. I do. Yes. It, look, it looks really good. It's really it's good. Just not well. Um, any like it's a very graphic anyone's film. with you. Yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched it. I watched it with some friends in theaters, and oh, every two minutes, I could just see them grabbing their eyes. I'm just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at the end, I turned to them, and they were just mouth agape. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know. Just to me, I mean. They did so, something so different with the source material for Barbie, you know, because it's uh, like when we get to Best Picture, I can talk about my ranking of the ten films that were nominated. Yeah, I didn't care for Barbie, truthfully. Oh, man, it I didn't think... do anything for me. I liked it a lot. I really did. Okay, so or, uh, but original screenplay, um, Anatomy of a Fall, uh, The Holdovers, Maestro, May December, and Past Lives. 
I don't think Maestro has a shot in hell. God no. Mm -mm. I think Anatomy wins this one. I I have yet to see Anatomy because I have yet to find a copy of Anatomy, but I did find one, and I will be watching it this week before Oscars night. As of the ones that I have seen, May December has the strongest screenplay in my opinion. I haven't seen that one yet. Actually, I that haven't one's seen one I'm that. hoping to watch this week. I have, It is I want fantastic. to see Rustin and May December and Nyad this week if I have time. Fingers crossed. I think you're going to love May December. Okay, maybe I'll put Just that based one on first. what I've heard you say tonight, I think you're going to adore May December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know that's what, what Natalie Portman, right? Yep, Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, and that has my favorite supporting actor performance from Charles Melton of the entire year. If if we're not counting stuff that had no chance for an Oscar, like Blackberry, which I think Glenn, Oh, Glenn Howard man. was incredibly deserving of a nomination, That was they so just good. didn't campaign for it, had no chance. If we're counting stuff that didn't have a chance, Charles Melton should have easily, easily taken the win, but... Let me read the the nominees for Best Picture. Um, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. So let's go from like movies that don't have a shot in hell in winning all the way up to what we think we're going to win. Because I, th I think this is a lock for a certain movie, and I think Yep. we all might I agree. think we all know But which one it but is. let's go, let's go from like the one that doesn't have a shot of winning to all the way up. Maestro, Past no way Lives, it's winning. Maestro. Ooh, Yeah, Maestro. Past Lives and Maestro aren't winning. Maestro Yeah, and Past no way. Lives, yeah. Yeah, no Past way. Lives, Yeah, Maestro. I, I adored, but no way. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've Yeah. seen Past Lives was probably my least favorite out of the 10, but I there these are 10 very strong. This is one of the strongest set of nominees that I can remember in a while. Strongest since 2019, maybe. Ooh, 2019's a great year. Twenty nineteen was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Between Jojo Rabbit, Parasite, uh, 1917... Um, oh, I know Marriage I'm Story. forgetting something. Oh yeah, Mary Story, Joker. I love 2019. Maestro was probably my number eight favorite. Barbie was in between the two. Just, Barbie didn't do anything for me, but I think also I heard all the hype around it, and so I got hyped up for something that was more than what it was. I think Poor Things and the reason why it works as well as it does It was not held back in any aspect. Mm They hmm were able to tell the exact story they wanted to tell, and they were given the resources, the talent, the money to do so. And it works on every level. I don't think there's a, sing a single issue with that film. Mm -hmm. it's a great movie So and like good. for me weirdly enough as much as i've been talking about how much i enjoyed poor things during this episode that's it number seven overall for me just because i love all of these movies so much and any day of the week that ranking i think could change How about a ma anatomy of a fall? it's a very popular one along among a lot of the members of the academy from what i've heard I don't know that it wins, but it could be a dark horse. Mm. Yeah. Zone of Interest was also a great movie, and I don't know why it's showing at so few theaters across the country, but that's an impactful film. And just the ending, oh my god, I mean, the ending, really, of all ten of these movies, all of them, for the most part, have really great endings that are just so memorable. Like that last scene, like last scene of Oppenheimer, last scene of Holdovers, last scene of Poor. They're like they're all just so well done. That last scene in Oppenheimer is crazy good. That one, I walked out thinking about that, and I kept thinking It about that on my drive home. It was so good I walked out and I bought tickets to another screening immediately <laughs> I did the same thing for Dune <laughs> How about the Yeah, holdovers? no Oh, It was great film. good. I love Holdovers Very, was my very third good. favorite. Great. For me, as somebody who wants to teach at some point, Holdovers was very personal for me. Yeah. Yeah, I liked Holdovers a lot, too. Um, I don't... The, well, the I don't thing think with it has Holdovers a chance of winning, for me, unfortunately. I watched it under the best conditions, I think. It was, it was snowing, and I went by myself to a theater to watch it. And it was a scattered audience. So there, it wasn't like full packed, but there was a decent amount of people in there. For that theater that I usually go to, these types of films are typically empty because it's a huge multiplex. And it's usually the big multiplex within my area that gets all the, the smaller releases. So it got holdovers. I went the, as soon as I could. And it was beautiful. I, I love unconventional Christmas movies because you think Christmas movies, you think like Home Alone, Elf, more family oriented stuff. You don't think more... beautifully written and beautifully executed stuff like the holdovers 
it works so well to the point where it could win Best Picture, but it's not taking it. There's no way it's taking it. I think we all fully agree it's Oppenheimer's. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a great yeah. it was a great film. It was sweet. Um I did not know about the director's stuff until after, but the film was great. The film was very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean well next on the list is Killers of the Flower Moon and Oppenheimer, but Ooh, it comes down to those crazy. two films that I think all of us are picking up and <laughs> oh yeah. yeah I mean I, poor Martin Scorsese right every time yeah. for, with the exception of The Departed every time he's got something that has some kind of shot gets derailed by like I don't know Kevin Costner or something yeah 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 because no, he he lost with Irishman he, yep yeah oh yeah another no, 2019 no. yeah another 2019 film god what a movie but no, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. What it left me broken. I, mm -hmm. I, I cried on the on the drive home. It was, it was a lot to take in, mm -hmm. and watching it in IMAX was insane, mm -hmm. because you wouldn't think of that as an IMAX movie in this. Mm -hmm. Like you don't think of that as something that would play well on an IMAX screen, but it does, and it works in the film's favor in so many aspects because you're kind of fully engrossed in this. You have absolutely no choice but to take it all in. Incredibly thought provoking, just tragic on all fronts. Lily Gladstone is crazy good in it. Out of all of the films of the year that were nominated for Best Picture, I think Killers is the one that affected me the most emotionally, mm -hmm. and that's that's something that I I don't take lightly because it works that well. So that one very well deserving of a win, but Oppenheimer is right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oppenheimer just they're, they're both I mean really, yeah, there's so many good movies on here but Oppenheimer is one of those films that defines the careers of everybody who's in it and oh yeah I think that Oppenheimer's got it and like you compare Oppenheimer to the other major biopic of this year Maestro especially just the differences between those two Oppenheimer is so much superior to Maestro it's not even close Uh, before we end here, I do want to talk about some films that shockingly didn't get nominations at all. Um, cause there's a few that we can mention, not many, thankfully, but there's a few that come to mind immediately. Like, um, wish. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Best picture nomination that should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm shocked that Asteroid City didn't get a nomination. Oh, I love yeah, that, Asteroid City. That, that was a great movie. Mm -hmm. Like, although uh, Napoleon for get set design, like eh, you can you can have a case for Asteroid City for set design, man. I mean, yeah, Wes was nominated for Henry Sugar. Yeah, yeah, he was nominated for Henry Sugar, which was fine. But Asteroid City was. I mean, right, I'm not the world's biggest short film guy, but like Henry Sugar didn't really do anything for me. Which and like when I left the theater after Asteroid City. I was just in awe of it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful yeah. project. Oh, absolutely. God, yeah, that um, one surprised me. Yeah. Um, uh, Priscilla. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It pisses me off that um that Iron Claw didn't get a nomination. Oh, don't even get me started. Dude, because that I'm came so out be it came out before the deadline, and that's such yeah. a good movie. Like, I'm why so didn't mad. it come out? I, we all thought Zac Efron would have had a Best Actor nomination. Oh, like, my we, God. we were all fully believing that. And I guess not, A twenty four A, A didn't campaign. I was at AEW, but I was not only wrestling. did that, not only did it piss me off that it didn't get an Oscar nomination, it also made me mad that they didn't distribute the film correctly because they didn't put it into major movie theaters. Like you were, I was um, scrambling to find a film, find a theater that was showing that thing. I had to pirate the thing because it wasn't in any theaters near me. Up in up in Canada, we, we were spoiled a little bit because so it was playing everywhere. It was playing everywhere. Over Such here. a good movie. Such a good movie. As a wrestling fan, I was I was very pleased by that. It it did the story so much justice. Yeah. To the point where it left. I went with my wrestling buddies and we were all just kind of distraught at the end. <laughs> like we knew the story, but See, yeah. seeing it is a whole other thing seeing it done I, with that level I, of mastery is a whole other thing i had no clue of the story Oof. so uh, going into it i was like okay they're, they're brothers they're wrestlers i was like and then oh man <laughs> my condolences brother <laughs> yeah 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 um the, the, the tom sawyer scene alone should have it for best picture 
that was their walkout song oh, if you sure. believe it or not dude that i didn't know i looked that i looked that up after i got out of that that, that would have been crazy walker <laughs> um yeah dude as crazy as it sounds listen iron claw instead of maestro for best picture hey i'm i'm just saying i'm i'm just saying listen go watch iron claw if you, if you haven't seen it um it's kind of shocking that Super Mario Bros. didn't get an animated feature. That doesn't surprise me. I'm not surprised. That was such a nothing movie, in my opinion. It was. I agree. It didn't do. I didn't care for it at all, really. I liked it just because I'm a Mario fan, but but just knowing that it was done by a big studio, and I mean it's done by Illumination, um, and they really don't care about the feature film category unfortunately or animated feature film category unfortunately mm. it was surprising to me that it didn't get nominated should it win absolutely not um should it even get nominated probably not but i'm just i was surprised that it didn't um i'm also i am dude oh my god when the, when the nominations came out and i didn't i saw that wish wasn't on the list i was so beyond excited because i thought it was going to get a nomination and i was so happy i was on my knees praying thanking god that it didn't get a nomination because it's <laughs> not a good movie and the academy really likes to nominate bad disney movies for best feature film hey, they didn't nominate animated. strange world thank god Oh God, Ooh. Jesus Christ! Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, could you imagine? Um, I don't know. What are some other films that didn't get? I mean, those are the big ones that I thought of. Can anyone else think of any? Or no? Yeah, I think I've probably I got a few. <laughs> uh, Blackberry. Nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Should have gotten something. My dark mm. horse for the year, though, and I I knew from the second I saw it, based on when it came out. That it would get nothing, mm. but it was deserving of everything. Was Are You There, God? It's Be Margaret. Oh, I think it should have, yeah. should have been nominated for adapted screenplay. It should yes. have been nominated for best picture, and it mm. should have gotten a nomination specifically for Rachel McAdams at best supporting actress because my favorite performance of the year in that category was Rachel McAdams. She was so good. Yeah. Um, I. <laughs> It, it surprised me that Guardians got anything, let alone mm -hmm. visual effects. Guardians should be nominated for something else. That was a great sound. movie. Yes. Sound, um, screenplay. I don't know. I don't know what you would get rid of. Maybe Maestro. Get rid of that. No, it would have to go into adapted screenplay. Because yeah. it's based oh, on yeah, comic yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that point, you can't get rid of anything. Yeah, you can't in there. get rid of it is, anything. They, they didn't yeah, you put would've... Killers of the Flower Moon in there. That's true. You couldn't you couldn't get rid of anything else. But I I mean, I don't know what it would be, but you can animate it, you can nominate it for something else. Um true. I felt like it should have. Um I mean, it's a weak argument, but it was a good film. Um I enjoyed it. Best Marvel and then, film of and last then year by the, far. The biggest snub to me and it shows how much the academy does not care about animated movies the biggest snub and the biggest mistake is nominating maestro for best picture and not nominating across the spider verse for best picture because that should have gotten a best picture nomination and it 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 doesn't shock me but it makes me very upset that it didn't and that they continue to ignore animated films when they go beyond just being an animated film it happens over and over and over again and it happened again this year so to me that was the biggest that was the biggest snub of any category is not nominating across the spider verse for for mm. best picture cuz it was also in 2018 it was the it was the um or was that technically the 2019 because it was the year after um Huh? Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, whenever, whenever, whatever that that year yeah, that was, was technically um, whatever Oscar year that was, um, because it came out in 2018, but I think it would be 2019 cycle. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, that year, that was all. I know the Best Picture was stacked that year, but no, 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 because the... you're talking about this film's released in 2018 for yeah. the 2019 Oscars. 
the Oscars were stacked from films released in 2019 in the 2020 Oscars, as I recall. Okay. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. So Unless whatever, I'm misremembering. whatever year Into the Spider-Verse was nominated uh, or, or one animated feature film. These two Spider-Verse movies have single-handedly twice changed the animation genre. Twice. How do you change something twice? How does a sequel for a movie that already changed the landscape of 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 animation movie making change it twice? Yeah, and then for not context, get a best picture too, no- nomination. The the like, film that won best picture that year was Green Book. It was up against oof. Black Panther, Black Klansman, oh, cer- Bohemian yeah, Rhapsody, That's... The Favorite, Roma, A Star Is Born, and Vice. That is certainly a memorable film. Green Book. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Green Book, to be honest. I like the music in Green Book. True. I've never, I've never heard of that movie before. <laughs> oh really? I, yeah, That's seriously, fair. I've never heard it's that name. It's forgettable. Before. It's never heard that name before. Compared to Into the Spider Verse, that surely should have won Best Picture. It's like, it's like this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Like, there's still hope for Beyond. That's true, but again, they just keep they. I don't personally I don't think they'll ever nominate another animated film for best picture ever again. They just continue to ignore these kind of films and it makes no sense to me. No sense. It it's it's ridiculous that Into the Spider-Verse when that was nominated, it was even a question that it would have won that. It should have been a absolute lock from the day the nominees were released. But somehow, because of the the academy being the way that they are, it was like, "Oh, will Into the Spider-Verse win it?" It was a shocker that it won it. It was like it, it changed animation. It changed oh, yeah. movie. How is it not best picture? <laughs> By definition, I would say a movie that changed that changed film would be a best picture. There's there might be something good about that movie. I don't know. It's my little rant for the for the academy. <laughs> it, I guess I have one final question that we can end mad. on for our conversation. Go ahead. So outside of Dune Part 2, which we've already talked about and which we already have either seen or are very excited for. Which film for 2024 are you most excited about? And perhaps we can leave Wolverine or Deadpool mm-hmm. and Wolverine out too because I feel like that's a pretty obvious choice. Yeah, and that's not... the That's kind of outside of what we're talking about, right? It's not up there for me at all, but... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> um. Yeah, and that's also not going to be nominated anywhere in the oh, yeah. <laughs> Oscars, so can leave that out um let me look up a list here you imagine if deadpool 3 wins best picture oh god um Crazy. for me for me the actually for me the most anticipated movie actually came out already um Ooh. for me that was megamind versus the doom syndicate oh my god and and um what? certainly it has lived up to its expectations that movie is a uh, incredible film um should absolutely be nominated for animated best animated feature film and best picture and should win both that film is beyond anything we've ever seen before and is just an incredible testament to the animation art form and to me really yeah to me that film is the best we're ever going to see not just this year of all time unbelievable film I'm going to go <laughs> with something <laughs> also related to I'm actually going to go with Joker Folie à Adieu. I'm very excited because for that. I'm very curious how they're going to work with that because the first film was an homage to Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, the classic Scorsese films. Yeah, Scorsese made a musical, but is this going to be like New York, New York? Is this going to be entirely different? I'm very, very curious for that film. Yeah, I'm very... I'm very excited for that film as well. Of course, Megamind was not my most anticipated film. That film is god awful. Oh, okay. Um, probably the worst. I didn't even film. know they made one. No, yeah, probably the worst film I've ever seen. And I'm not kidding. That movie is absolutely atrocious. Maybe if you haven't seen Madam Web. Oh God, I this is worse than that. This this movie looks like it was made somehow. This movie looks worse than the me- the actual Megamind movie that was made in 2010. This thing looks like it was animated on a Windows 95 computer. Um, probably my most anticipated movie for this year. This is tough. Um, I don't even know 
any movies that were coming out this year. I'm really excited for Kung Fu Panda 4. I, on, just being honest, I'm very excited for that movie. Um, I'm excited for Inside Out 2. Um, I'm looking at a list to remind myself some of the movies that are coming out this year. Um, Garfield looks pretty good. I'm excited for that. Um, as you can tell, I like animation. So oh, most really? of mine are going to be animated movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's the... Oh, Beetlejuice 2, I'm really excited for. Um, just because we wait, waited a long time for that. Big year for sequels. Yeah, great year for sequels. Um, I'm losing my mind over one specific sequel, and that's my most anticipated film this year. Just that? Furiosa. Well, I guess prequel, technically. I'm trying to think what that's a sequel to, for. Oh, the Mad Max one. one? Fury Road, yeah. Furiosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man. I've never seen that, actually any of the Mad Max. Yeah, I'm films. not a big Mad Max guy. So. I just rewatched Fury Road last night. My God. Mm. <laughs> My God. In IMAX, that thing's going to go insane. So, very excited for that. Oh, um, Mufasa, The Lion King. Very excited for mm. that one at the end of the year. Um... Wait, actually? <laughs> no. Dang, you just scared me for a second. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What about you know, the it... Moana TV show that they oh, made into God. Moana? Oh, don't even remind me, please. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. They will be shocked if I watch. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> well, actually, a movie that I actually really, really liked and very excited to watch here very soon um, is uh, Lisa Frankenstein. Great movie. Oh, okay. I heard that was really good. So I saw that twice in theaters. <laughs> yeah, very excited to see that. The 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 uh the the new Mean Girls. I want to see that. I heard mixed. Oh, things I heard about it's that, horrible. But I've heard it was good, and then I've heard horrible things. So I don't know what to think. But you know, I'm a Mean Girls purist. I I love everything that's come out of Mean Girls. It's Did not you see bad. It? It's, it's not, not, it's not the first okay. thing. It's not bad. Okay. Okay. It's a good modern adaptation. I think it's obviously nowhere near as memorable or special as the first one because it's almost impossible to even come close to any of that excellence but mm -hmm. it does its job it's fine it is shot like a music video but you know what it's okay it's not bad i'll i'll leave you with one more i'm i right. really want to see the bob marley movie the w one i'm very long. disappointed by the review i wanted to see it but the I... reviews for that and the reviews for argyle really disappointed me that's that's true but the um the actual audience reviews are really good for Bob Marley. Okay. Um, like looking at its Rotten Tomatoes, which you can't judge a movie by Rotten Tomatoes, but yeah. you know, forty-two percent for the actual critics and then ninety-two percent for the audience score. So I usually go by audience score for this kind of stuff. So you know, when the when the just when the the compare when the ratings are like so different like that, I usually go by the audience score and it looks mm. promising for that. Mm. Yeah. So, well, Joe, I appreciate uh, you coming on. I also appreciate you stay, uh, sticking around since you were going to watch that uh, AEW match. Oh, it's it's been on. I've been having a, I've been having oh, a oh. great time <laughs> double tasking. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, where can where can we check you out? If you if you want very stupid memes, uh, I'm at Hackerman Joe on Twitter. That's where that's where I, I lurk for the most part. Right now, I'm exclusively a Dune account. So if you like Dune, uh, you can throw me a follow over there. Very cool. That's very really cool. it. <laughs> I'm not on anything else anymore. <laughs> no, he is not. Uh, very cool. All right. All right well, thanks Ryan. for having me. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks absolutely. For joining this us. was a lot of fun. Um, Ryan, where can I'm we glad find you were you? here too, Joe, because if Dane was over here talking about how Barbie's gonna win all these categories that four <laughs> things is gonna win, I'm very <laughs> glad you were here to back me up. <laughs> I'm happy to be the backup. I liked Barbie, man. I thought it was a good film. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, where can we find you? Pieces of continuity on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I am continuing my deep dive into the Sherlock Holmes book series. Still on the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, a lot of short stories, and now releasing every other week. You can check me out there. Awesome. You guys know where to find me, youtube.com slash C slash Big Beautiful Diz. Have uh, a big um, project that hopefully you guys know about. Um, Where'd you go ASMR? 
for me I don't, out there. No, I don't know. <laughs> that that's coming very soon. So check me out over there. Get all the details. Um. Anyway, leave a like. Consider subscribing if you're listening on YouTube. Leave a review if you're listening to audio. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.